Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you have given us this time to be here, to study your word, to be ready for the storm ahead. We know that the devil is not happy. The devil is after us, but you are more powerful than him. What we need to do is to be ready to allow you to work through us and be with us now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, what was the topic of yesterday? Just a little bit of a recap. Uh, counting to know how to count. Okay, do you know how to count? Definitely, all of us, we know how to count. But there is a one way. There is a one way to count. Counting what that we need to learn, even if we know how to count one, two, three, four. Counting what? Counting our days. There's a wrong way to count our days, and there is a right way to count our days. And it depends. If we count our days wrongly, then uh, we, that will affect everything. Everything, actually. Our relationship with God, our re relationship with one another, uh, the way we, we work, the way we get ready, everything is affected by the way we count the days. If it is good, then that will help us. But if it is not good, then that will not help us to be ready. So, today, uh, our topic is, as you can see, according to what is advertised, I've changed a little bit because of uh, one of the reasons is that uh, we miss one presentation, so uh, forgive me for arranging things so that we can cover the topics anyway, uh, that we are not going to miss things. So today, we are going to talk about the power. You will receive power. Because for us to be able to face the future, to face the storm, we need the power of God. There's no way that we can do it on our own. Only, only way for us to be ready, to be able to face the troublous time ahead is that we need to be filled with the power of God. We need to be filled with the, the Holy Spirit. So, to today, this afternoon, this is our topic. We need, uh, we need the power of God, the power of God to do His work, and the power of God to be able to stand when the trials and the problems come. We know that uh, we have a problem. You see, in the end of time, the promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit during the latter reign is to be expected and prepared for. The experience of the early church is to be repeated in much greater power and results. We are grateful, definitely, for the progress of the free angels' messages around the world. Nevertheless, the existing reality is a stark contrast to what God has promised. We are so happy to see and to hear uh, the work of God all around the world. Um, we know God is working in a mighty way, but when we see and read what God has promised, and when we see the reality right now, it is not according to what God has promised. I said, why is that? 
And what is the solution? That's why we are here today. We want to find a solution. You see, uh, for the early church, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 23, it is said, If indeed ye continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23. So, it is said here, my brothers and my sisters, that the gospel was preached to every creature under heaven. The early church preached the gospel to every creature, the then known world. Of course, the work was not yet finished then because uh, there is still part that not rich. But the then known world, they have reached. That was powerful. In just one generation, in a single generation, in the book Ministry of Healing, page 141, I read, the work of the disciples was to spread a knowledge of the gospel. To them was committed to the work of proclaiming to all of the world the good news that Christ brought to men. That work they accomplished for the people of their time, for the people of their time, to every nation under heaven. The gospel was carried in a single generation. In a single generation, the gospel was preached, carried. That was the reality then. And the promise, in the spirit of prophecy, is clear. Uh, in the book, Christ Object Lesson, page 121, Paragraph 1, I read this. These sins, that means the sins in the book of Acts. When you read the book of Acts, these sins are to be repeated. And with what, everybody? With greater power. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost was a former rain. But the latter rain will be more abundant. The Spirit awaits our demand and reception. Christ is again to be revealed in his fullness by the Holy Spirit's power. So, the promise of God is clear that whatever we read in the book of Acts, from the book chapter 1 to the chapter 28, all these episodes, all these uh, scenes, events, are to be repeated. That will be wonderful. What do you think? Can you think that whatever you read in the book of Acts will happen here in Michigan? will happen in your church, will happen in your neighborhood. What do you think of that? What do you think of that? Wonderful, right? Yes, even half of what, what happened in the book of Acts will happen to us. Oh, we will say, hallelujah, amen. That will be powerful. But what God has promised is to be more than what we read in the book of Acts. That is what God has promised. Do you believe in that? Or is it, it's not, is it something that we say, well, no, 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 
God does not mean that. Do you think God means that? He means it. Yeah, he said, it will be more abundant and it will be in his fullness. Wow. And I have just discovered this recently. This is, this is powerful. Look at this. It's in the first letter. Um, manuscript 4, written in 1852, paragraph 1. This actually blows our mind. He said, you are getting the coming of the Lord too far off. I saw the latter rain was coming as suddenly as a midnight cry, and with ten times the power. Ten times the power. Think of that. Ten times. Not twice, not three times, but ten times the power. The power of the latter rain. This is what God, God has promised. This is the power that God wants us to have. The church. So, this is, we can cling to that. And then, I, I continue again in the book, Great Controversy, page 612. He said, the great work of the gospel is not to close with less manifestation of the power of God than marks its opening. So, we, we cannot think that at the end of time, you will see less power, less manifestation of the power of God. So, what we see right now, uh, when you compare it with what you read in the book of Acts, and what is promised, what is predicted, do you think that it is happening right now? What is written, what is promised? We must admit it's not happening. Yes, we have seen um, God is working. We are grateful for that. But it's not enough. It's not the way God as promised it. And you see, in the book Testimonies, Volume 9, page 126, it said the sick were healed. Last night, uh, Pastor Mark Finley talked about the healing. Uh, for those of you who followed, the miraculous will, uh, a healing of that individual, God healed. The sick were healed. Yes, we see that, but we, see, we should see more of that. The sick were healed, and other miracles were wrought. Hundreds and thousands were seen visiting families, opening before them the Word of God. Hearts were convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the spirit of a genuine conversion was manifested. Wow! Picture this, my brother. Picture this to be in your local church. Think of this. He said, well, the great work of the gospel will close with a great manifestation of the power of God. And then you see people, sick will be healed naturally with the natural remedies and through miracles and God God will use, you know, um, God will use the means. We are not against a hospital or treatment, uh, but we are not against praying for the sick as well. We believe in both. Yes, yes or no? Definitely yes. And God wants to do that. He, God wants to do that more. At the end of time, this is what he wants to do. So the big question, it's not my question. It is the question of Ellen G. White. 
in the book, The Desire of Ages, page 823. The gospel still possesses the same power. And why should we not today witness the same result? Why should we not today witness the same results? So it is clear here. The gospel, still the same power. We cannot say, well, you know, it's not fair. The gospel that uh, Peter and Paul preached, they were more, uh, it was more powerful than the gospel I preach now. The gospel is still the same. The same power. What about God? Maybe you say, well, you know, God were, that was 2,000 years ago, God were, uh, God was younger then. Uh, he's quite older now and um, uh, he doesn't have enough power. He starts to be weak. Yes or no? No, definitely not. It's not God. So, it's not the gospel. It's not the message. The problem is the messenger. It asks. God is willing to do what he has done in the past. And not only what he has done in the past, but his promise is to do more than what he did at the end of time. It will be more power for us to preach the gospel and for us to be able to stand the persecution, to stand the storm ahead. Yes, Jesus Christ helped the, the early church, the apostle, to stand the persecution. You see, all of them actually died a martyr de death. Uh, it, Actually, it is almost all of them, but one didn't die. Uh, John, the revelator, was put in a boiled uh, oil, but God rescued him. And then he was sent to the, the, the Patmos. So, God, uh, God sustained them to preach the gospel and to stand firm despite the persecution, despite the troubles time. And God is telling us today that he is more than willing to do even more than what he did for the early church. Because, remember the first day? There will be the first day of our seminar. I, I said, I I mean, the Bible said that there will be troublous time that, will, that has never happened before like that. So, it will be intense. But the power of God will be up to that. So, we have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. Because God is providing what we need to stand. Is providing what we need. But the question is, right now, what is wrong? Even the servant of the Lord, Ellen G. White, is asking this question. And we should ask the same question right now. After reading all of that, after knowing all these promises, so the question is, the gospel still possesses the same power. And why should we not today witness the same results? Hmm. That is a question that we need to answer. There are many uh, answers to that. Definitely, uh, the classic answer is that we don't surrender enough. We don't surrender all 
We are not allowing God just to take possession of our lives. We are kind of keeping something, hold on into something, and God cannot uh, have the, the entire. Tomorrow we'll talk more about that. I would like you to come back tomorrow, talk about um, the key to have this power in our hearts. But today, I would like to uh, talk about something about our identity. Our identity is one of the reasons why we don't have this power uh, in, in, in its fullness. We don't embrace 100% our identity. We don't. And we need to do that. God has given us this identity and we need to live accordingly. I have a table here. This table, of course, we need more time to study this. I call this comprehensive identity of the remnant church. You know, identity is very important in the Bible and even in life in general. And every point here, if we embrace it, it will help us to be closer to God. If we believe it, the first one of the characteristics of the remnant church, first of all, let it be clear. If this is not arrogance, but it is the truth. We are the remnant church. Yes or no? At the end of time. Not that we are perfect, but God has chosen this organization, this church, to be the remnant church to preach the gospel. Definitely, there will be the time of shaking. There will be uh, three categories of the remnant church. I mean, in the remnant church. One is those who are to be, unfortunately, shaken out. Shaken out. When the time of trouble comes, because of lack of grounding, lack of the power of God in their heart, they decide to come out, to leave. This is what we call shaken out. And then, according to Revelation chapter 18, there will be the shaken in. Those who are from different parts, different uh, walks of life, from other denominations, from many, they will be shaken in. When they hear the voice, and then they realize, yes, this is the true. That is the voice of the shepherd. Then they will come, come out of, uh, of where they are and join in. So they will be shaken in. And in the middle, those who are unshaken. That means they are here and they will go nowhere. They will remain faithful no matter what. I pray that all of us will be unshaken. When the time of shaking comes, when the time of uh, challenges come, we are here. We, we don't move. We stay here. Yes, other, others will join. Unfortunately, uh, others may come out, will be shaken out, but we need to ask God. He said, God, Help me. I want to stay here. I don't have the strength, but you do. So help me. Every day, 
Remember yesterday, our lessons? Every day, we need to be ready. Every day. To be unshaken. Every day. So, this is what we need. So, this is our identity. This will help us to be strong. The first, we need to believe that this church is a prophetic movement. This is a prophetic movement. If you go to Revelation chapter 10, verse 11, and chapter 12, verse 17, <coughs> sorry, you will see that this movement is a prophetic movement. God has planned it ahead of time. This is not by accident. It just so happened that, oh God, uh, there is a denomination there. The, then here we are, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. No, no, no. It is a prophetic movement. God has planned it at the end of time. There will be such a movement, and this is the movement. So, that will help us to be strong in the faith. We should not kind of waver. Oh, is this, is this really the church? Uh, because there will be uh, some deception. There will be some challenges at the end of time. And those who are not sure, those who kind of hesitate, oh, no, no, no. The Adventist church, no, 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 this is not, maybe this is not the church of God. Maybe this is not the remnant church. No. Uh, those people who, who are in that category, when the challenge comes, it's easier for them to fall because they are wobbling, they are wavering. But if you are firm, you know that it is from God. This is from God. God has initiated this. This movement is from God. Revelation chapter 10 is clear. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17, you see the spirit of prophecy, the gift of prophecy guiding us. You know, this is, this is an amazing thing to have the writings of Ellen G. White for us to know what is going to happen. You know, ahead of time. You know, Jesus Christ, his biography was written before he was born. And what he did is that he studied what is written about him and then lived accordingly. And that's why he said, this is to fulfill what is written in the book of to fulfill. And the same thing for the church. It is written already ahead of time what is going to happen. And we just need to study the last day's events. We know there will be lottery. We know there will be ceilings. We know there will be um, loud cry. We know that will be reformation, revival and reformation. We know ahead of time. That is a great benefit for us. So this church, this church is God's church. That does not mean that all of us here, we are perfect. No, we have our challenges. We, have our, we are still growing. We are still growing. Uh, it is made of human beings, frail human beings like you and myself, but we should all the time pursuing holiness, all the time kneeling, uh, asking God to help us to grow. That is what, and we need to 
uh, need to grow all the time. But the church itself is God's church. That is one. Is that clear, my brothers and my sisters? So that is the identity of the church. It is a prophetic movement, and it is God's church. Not that all the members will be saved. We studied that. Remember, if there's no change, not even one out of 20, we studied that. But there must be a change. We must be revived. We must be reformed. And people who are still outside of the, of the fold will join. That is the way it is. It is just like a, like a bus or a train. Uh, the conductor is the same, but people come out or come in. The passengers change. I hope that uh, you will just stay up to the destination. You are not going to come out in a, uh, a station and say, okay, I will, I will go out here. No, no, no. Stay there in the train. Don't go out destination, finish line. This is why we need to stay. You may have some hard time sometimes. You may be offended or someone probably mistreated you in the church. You are disappointed. No. Um, when I pastored the church, I, I, I had a baptismal class, and I prepared them for baptism. And then toward the end, when uh, they are going to be baptized, I said, he said, uh, you know, my dear friends, there's only one reason for you to leave the church. If that happens, then leave the church. If that does not happen, don't leave the church. No matter what. Oh, I said, what is that, Pastor? And then I, I stay a little bit for a pause, a little suspense. He said, there's one reason only for you to leave the church. What is that? That reason is when Jesus disappoints you and uh, when you can prove that Jesus does not love you anymore, or mistreat, Jesus mistreats you, then you can leave the church. Of course, you cannot say that because Jesus already died for us. We cannot blame him. What else can you, can, can you do? You no. Know? So I said, Anything, whatever, and whoever, you have no reason to leave the church. This is God's church. This is God's church. It is not perfect. Sister White says so, but this is God's church. So, this identity of... Uh, prophetic movement is powerful to help us to face the future. So when we are, when many winds of ideologies or ideas is coming here and there, you are, you stand. You know that this is God's church. You are not going to leave the church. You are not going to come out. This is it. And you see people coming in. Unfortunately, you see people coming out. You stay there. Be the unshaken. Be the unshaken, not the shaken out at the end of time. Be the, By the grace of God, be the unshaken. That is what we need. So, identity. If we have that, then we are more dedicated to the Lord. We, we say, Lord, I need to pray more now. I need to study 
study more, and they need to preach the gospel and will be stronger. The second one, the characteristic, this a comprehensive identity, is um, this church is the church that preaches the everlasting gospel. That one, I don't need to spend a lot of time because we talk a lot about this. But you know, this is the church that preaches the gospel, the true gospel, the justification, the sanctification, the glorification. This is it. This is the gospel. We are so glad that we are part of this, of this movement, my brothers and my sisters. Many times we take it for granted, but this is a great thing. For some of us, we were in darkness before. We see the difference. I mean, it is by the grace of God that I'm here, and I'm so happy to be part of this. This is, the, this is the church preaching the everlasting gospel. The gospel, the good news. The good news in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. And then this is a worldwide movement. It's so refreshing to know that this is the church, and this is a worldwide movement. Wherever you go, you see brothers and sisters. Worldwide movement. And this is actually part of God's family in, in heaven. This is the church. You know, God's family, we have the heavenly family and the earthly family. We are the earthly family, and the angels... And, uh, and uh, the divinity, um, the earth, uh, heavenly family, and we are part of that. This is a big family. We are a family, a worldwide family. Worldwide, this is a church. It is not just a church like uh, in a corner, uh, right, where, just in a county. No, no, no. This is a worldwide movement. It's a miracle. The Seventh-day Adventist church is a phenomenon. It's a miracle. Starting it very small, and now it covers the globe. And uh, uh, to God be the glory. We are not proud of that. We are just glorifying God. Glorifying God. And we know already that, uh, not that, if we are members of the church, then we have to be, then that is a guarantee for salvation. No. Uh, we need to be members of the church. But we should not say, well, I'm a member of the church, so I don't need to watch. I, it is assured that I go to heaven. No. That's why we, we need not to be uh, overly proud. Because, uh, yes, the church is a church of God, but yourself myself, we need to have that personal connection with God. It's a worldwide, but it is also personal. It's a worldwide movement, but it's good to know <coughs> that we are part of God's movement, worldwide movement. And then, this is the one that I need to spend more time. Let's open our Bibles. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. We are going to study the Bible now. And I do believe that if we treat this, if we deal with this, properly, this will help us. Okay, open your Bibles, Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Uh, many times we just pass this quickly. Said, 
Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Uh, when we explain to people about the characteristic of the two church, we quote this verse, yes or no? Yes. When we conduct an evangelistic campaign, this is our uh, very familiar text. But I would submit my brothers and my sisters that we need to go deeper than what we are saying normally. He said, okay, uh, the true church must keep the commandment of God and have the faith of Jesus. And then we emphasize a lot the commandment of God, including the Sabbath. That is true, but not sufficient. We need, the, the verse talks more about that, more than that. When he talks, when the verse talks about the, uh, the people of God, first, as it is said here, having, I start with the having the faith of Jesus. Not the faith in Jesus. Um, it's not totally wrong, but I like the version to say faith of Jesus. Okay, let's study about this. This alone can be a seminar. I have a seminar on how to increase your faith. I, I mean topics. Faith. Faith is important. Jesus Christ asked this question in Luke chapter 18, verse 8. When the Son of Man comes... We live, find faith on earth. He asked that question. What is behind that question? He said, okay, when the Son of Man, who is the Son of Man? He himself. That means when Jesus comes at the end of time, is he going to find faith on earth? That means... Faith can be a rare commodity. And Jesus Christ in the Gospels talks about faith. Faithless generation. Oh, you people of little faith. He talks a lot about faith. Oh, he could not do a lot of things there because of their lack of faith. Do you believe that I can heal you? So faith for Jesus Christ Faith is important. In the gospel, and he was just wondering what will happen at the end of time. And the answer is in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. There will be people, the people of the end time, the movement, this this prophetic movement, and they will be known for having the faith of Jesus. So now the question, are we known to be people of faith? The faith of Jesus? That's the question. So what we need is to have the faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus, faith to have the power to live and the power to do. What is missing, what is rare in the church is the faith of Jesus. Many times we walk by sight, but not by faith. We lack faith. This church must be known to be a church of faith, the faith of Jesus. And there's no power because 
of lack of faith. We don't believe. So, the solution is, I want to encourage you to study this faith. Our time is not enough to go deep into this, but uh, I'm giving you a homework. Go and study the subject of faith and practice it. Study. Pray. Lord, actually the disciples, I said, um, increase our faith. We need to pray, asking God, and you need to exercise our faith. Study it and exercise it. Believe in the power of God. God can do that. We must talk faith. Sometimes we, we like to talk doubt. Oh, no, no, I, that will never happen. No, no, let's talk faith. God can do that. He is powerful. Yes. Faith. We need to have that faith of Jesus. Yes, we need to have faith in Jesus to be saved. We need to believe in him. But we need also to have his faith to be able to be able to live the way he lived and to work the way he worked. This is what we need. That faith of Jesus. This is the need of the church right now. Yes, we need buildings. We need money. But the urgent need of the church is the faith of Jesus. And the church needs to be known. He said, I read this verse again. It is clear. Here is the patience of the saints. Ye are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Yes, it's good to be known to keep the commandments of God. Definitely, yes, including the fourth commandment, the Sabbath. Yes, that is the, the seal of God. Yes, but we need to be known as well of people of faith. There is imbalance. We talk a lot about the keeping of the commandment, but we don't talk much about the faith of Jesus. There must be a revival of the talk of the faith of Jesus. If we want to have the power of God, again, what was promised in the book of Acts, promised in the spirit of prophecy, if for that to happen again, we need, we need that faith. And Jesus is the author and the finisher of what? Of our faith. So if we connect with Jesus, we'll have more faith. We need to be known. And definitely, we need to be known on keeping God's commandments. Obedience. You see, many times, unfortunately now, people started to say, no, you don't really need to obey. You will not be saved by the keeping of the commandments, doing all these things. It, it's not a salvation issue. That is a deception. Yes, we cannot be saved by keeping the commandment, but Jesus said, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. So you cannot separate love and obedience. Uh, you know, that is a kind of a divorce that God will not like. That kind of divorcing love and commandment and obedience. So, to prove that you love God, you keep the commandments. You keep the commandment not to be saved, but because you love God. You want to please God. You, you, you are grateful. So, obedience is important. It is just like tree and fruits. People say, well, I just want, I just want like the, fruit, uh, the, the tree. Uh, I don't need any fruits. 
okay, uh, you have the fruit trees there, the orange, and then it's just the tree. Uh, you don't need the oranges. You need, oh, definitely. So, tree is, is the, the justification. That is your connection with God. And uh, the obedience is the fruits. So, we need to be known as people who obey the commandment of God. Not to be saved, but because we have been saved, because we love Jesus, want to please him. He is our father. We must be obedient children. All right? Yeah. We, we, we love. Yes, we are so happy to have an obedient child. All right? So God is our father, and then you will be happy. He is a father, right? He will be happy if we, his children, we are obedient. So what is this idea of saying, oh, don't worry about obedience? Okay, are we worried about being uh, the son of God then? Well, son and daughters of God? Definitely, yes. So, if we are children of God, then we must be obedient. So, the church must be known, uh, as it is said here, keeping the commandment of God. It, God's commandment, the church. So, and you know what? I like this. All his biddings are enabling. When, when God commands, in that commandment, there is power. That, that's why if I, if I give a command, I don't have really the power to empower, yes, if I have authority maybe, uh, for him, for that person to be able to have the strength to do it. But with God, God gives us the power to do it. We just need to accept. He said, yes, 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 Lord, I will do that. And then God will supply the power to obey his command. This is the good thing about God. God is not asking us something that we cannot do because we can do it because he is going to supply the strength to do it. Supernaturally. When we say, okay, obey this commandment. Say, Lord, yes, I love you. Help me to do it. And God gives his spirit for us to be able to do it. So, uh, we be known to be. So, this is the time at the end of time. It is not the time to become relaxed. Oh, keeping of the Sabbath. It will become very relaxing and they say something that we didn't do before, we do it now, and something that was uh, totally against the keeping of the Sabbath becomes normal. Uh, or in those commandments, they say, oh, yes, no, 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 you are narrow-minded. We don't really need to do that. This is not a way to keep. No. If you love someone, you don't look for something less to please that person. Yes or no? You are not going to look for the minimum to please him. He said, what is the minimum for him not to get mad? I just do this so that he will not get mad at me. Is that love? No, no, no. When you love someone, you are not going just to avoid uh, being mad. You being mad. You f look for something for him to be happy. What else can I do for him to be happy? Maybe I need, I need to find flowers. I, 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 let me go to the shop. I, I need to buy something for him. Oh, yes. I think he need to fill, uh, to fill the gas, his tank. I need, you, you kind of being creative. You need to find a way Find a way, extra way, and until the person, no, we don't need to do that. Why do you have to do that? I can't do that. No, 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 I'm, I'm good. That is love. Love does not look for something less, but something more. We do that in our relationship with each other, yes or no. But why then we don't do it with God? Why we are always like, almost like bargaining? He said, God, can you just reduce your requirement? 
He said, this is too much. No, 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 I don't want to do that. Always bargaining. Put it less, put it less. No, 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 no. If you love me, Jesus said, you keep my commandments. And not the minimum, but the maximum. So, we need to be known as people of God, people to obey the commandments. And the good news is, it's not, it's not by might, but the power of God. Okay, we need to be known as well as people of faithful endurance. Faithful endurance to endure. We need to learn. You see, the Bible, is, the Bible says is faithful, said he is the patience, the endurance of the saints, asking to be patient to endure the problems of life. Don't, don't uh, indulge in complaining attitude. Um, some people, they like to complain a lot, uh, as if they have a, a special degree in complaining. He said complaining, lamenting, uh, no. It is almost like writing another book of lamentations. Um, no, don't write another book of lamentations. One is enough in the Bible. <laughs> so, but write the book of praises. We need to praise God. We need to count uh, the blessings of the Lord. The blessings of the Lord. And when you count the blessings of the Lord, we'll become stronger. And that will help us to be patient, to know uh, what God has done. But if we count all the problems, the challenges of life, they become like big mountains. But if you count the blessings of the Lord, and God will help us. God will help us to, um, to have this endurance. So we need to be, to ask God to help us to be patient right now. Because we will be persecuted. We will be challenged. So we need to learn now, now, with all the challenges of life right now. If we, are, we cannot even handle those small things now, the, the trials of life, the temptations of life, if we are not faithful to those ones, how can we be faithful to the big ones that they come? So, if you have challenges and trials in life right now, take it like this. This is a lesson for me. I have a homework here. Let me study this. Let me be stronger through this. Ask God. All trials are called to prayer, Sister White says. And that is how we develop patience and endurance, even right now. You see, time, the storm will come. Not may come, but will come. We need to be ready. And the preparation is not then, it's now. Don't say, oh, no, when it comes, then I'm going to prepare. It will be too late. Preparation is now. Now. Be closer to God. And learn those things. We have covered today up to the faithful uh, endurance. And uh, tomorrow, the end, I will, I will talk about the part of this. And I will also talk about the key to have this power. The power to be and the power to do. That is the way. So, um, tomorrow, don't miss it. And we will have a season of prayer tomorrow uh, to help us to have this power. 
Is it clear, my dear brothers and my sisters? Okay. Uh, so to, today, are we saying, Lord, really thank you for this movement, but help me to be faithful. Not just a member, but a faithful member of your family. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you love us. Thank you that you are the one who called us. We don't deserve anything, but it is by your grace that we are here today. Help us, Lord, to be faithful. We want this power, but we don't surrender enough. So we need to surrender our lives to you. Just come into our hearts today and give us the power that you have promised. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.